Hey, what is happening everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we have a special video for you guys. Thanks to Pimax, they sent one of their reps down to Vancouver for me to try out their prototype Pimax AK headset. And before we get this video started, I do want to make this clear that this is their V2 prototype and they already have a V3 that is ready and they will be demoing it at the New York and San Francisco events. So I'll leave links for those in the description below if you guys are interested. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So first of all, let's go ahead and set the stage. Uh, the plan was actually try this headset on my personal computer that I had loaded with a 10 ETI prior to this occasion. But unfortunately, I was not able to do that because they had some prototype software and I respect that. So I was not able to try it out on my computer. But what I did get to try out, it was actually to run one base station from my HTC Vive and one base station from the Pimax 8K headset, the prototype base station that they have. So any of the stuff that you guys will see here in this video, any of the issues or technical things, they could all change at any time in the future prototype. To continue on, uh, the only thing that I was not able to try out so much was to try out the current controllers that they had. If you look at the post that they posted recently, they actually have plans to create a different type of controller. And that would be an HTC Vive Knuckles-like controller for the Pimax 8K. So, Whatever they had on display, here's what it looked like uh, side by side with the HTC Vive controller. So it doesn't matter if I tried it or not, it was broken anyways, it was dropped multiple times. So instead, obviously we have used my HTC Vive controllers that were hooked up directly to the computer using cables to connect between the headset and the computer. Which makes me think that the headset actually doesn't have a Bluetooth module inside it yet to connect with the controllers or something else. Again, it is a prototype, so that's that. So it's the V2 prototype headset of the Pimax 8K and we'll get to that in just a bit. And we tried it out with two of my HTC Vive controllers using one base station of the HTC Vive and one base station from the Pimax 8K. And all that was running on their usual MSI gaming laptop that was running, I believe, a 7700K and a GTX 1080. And there's actually one more thing about the setup here and that the headset and the controllers were both hooked up using a very short cable, as many have talked about previously in their experience with the demos in previous events. So the headset and the controllers were hooked up with cables that spanned around a meter and a half or so. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how my experience has been with some of the games I have tried out on this headset. Now, a couple of days prior to the demo, I actually went ahead on the Vive Reddit forums and asked if there were any questions that people wanted answered. Since I was getting a hands-on experience in my studio to try out this thing, so I've gotten a lot of responses and a lot of good questions. And one of the popular suggestions that people wanted to know how it was was to play onwards and see how well the drawing distance has been improved. Since this thing runs two displays, yes, we had two displays, 4K per eye. But unfortunately, I was not able to try out onwards. It was not installed on the laptop and it was not part of the Steam library that they had on their laptop. I did have it on my computer, but again, I couldn't try that because they had some prototype software that they don't want me to have on my computer. Then I moved on to Space Pirate Trainer and I gotta say, the experience was actually really, really good. I mean, it was almost like using an HTC Vive despite the cables and whatever. It was actually on point. The tracking was very good, especially when it comes to the headset. Moving my head quickly, moving the headset around really quick, there was no problems tracking whatsoever. I also did not notice any ghosting and the overall experience was pretty smooth. That said, one thing I did encounter was that the triggers were actually randomly toggling on the controllers. And remember, I was using Vive controllers and uh, that's probably because of the better software or something going on, but that's fine. It's a prototype. These are controllers hooked up through cable and things can go wrong. So that's not an issue. That could probably be easily fixed in the future. Then I tried to go ahead and launch a virtual desktop, which they did have, and I did install it since they had it on their library and it crashed. They actually crashed the whole Steam VR service and we had to restart the computer, start the Pimax services, then start Steam VR and try something else. Which then I tried to find raw data and it was not there. And finally I went ahead and played Fruit Ninja. Which once again, it's a very smooth experience, everything was on point. But one issue that I did have was if I moved my controls in a specific way really fast, uh, the right hand controller would actually disappear or should I say disconnect and reappear a couple seconds later. And that's probably because of the USB connections and I think that's the case because the cables were probably worn out from all the demoing that was happening prior. So that's probably it. So yeah, those are the games I tried out. Not much because I've spent more time focusing on like if there are any issues with tracking. One of the plans was actually to get some recorded gameplay uh, using GeForce Experience or an Elgato card. But again, they're running their own laptop so I couldn't do that. So let's go ahead and talk about the technical terms that they have included in their brochure and in their promotion. So they have this thing called Brain Warp, which a lot of people are confused about, one of them including me, and I believe it's some kind of newer version of what they did in the previous Pimax 4K, which is supposed to have some kind of upscaling and interpolation, but that's pretty much what I think it is if you run a lower end hardware. But I can tell you, I do have a photo of the actual Steam VR information, which gives you the resolution and the refresh rate, 
and unfortunately they don't want me to talk about the refresh rate so i'm not going to talk about it but what i can tell you is that it is actually running 4k times 2 because remember there are two 4k screens side by side it's not 8k it's 4k times 2. the refresh rate is also high but with this v2 prototype it is actually running hdmi so the v3 prototype i've been told it actually would be using display ports which should increase the refresh rate and be at what they claim. By the way, I'll leave a link in the description below for the brochure that I was given. And uh, if you guys want to check it out, you can check it out. Now the frame timing data, I was waiting for it to get a screenshot of it. Again, they don't want to give me it, but I can tell you from the, also the screenshot that I got, that frame data was pretty good. From the little graph that was on the bottom left side. So frame data was showing perfectly fine. So there you go. Again, I can't show you the exact details, but I could probably tell you this stuff. Now, moving on to the hardware. So once again here, they don't want me to show you what the lens looks like close up. Uh, that's probably patented technology or something. They don't want to show it until the final release. That's fine uh, because it's changing anyways on the V3 because the V3 does have improved better lenses. Um, the V2 did have some kind of bubbly effect. It wasn't perfect. Uh, there were guard rays. Yes, there were guard rays. And that's probably fixed in the V3, hopefully. Not too sure. We'll know from people that used it in New York and San Francisco. Someone asked if there were double layers. No, there were not. But once again, version 3 of the headset would have newer, improved lenses. IPD, I asked them about it, and they said they would have both software and hardware. And the dial for that will be on the right side, which currently on the V2 is not working. Focus adjustments, there won't be any because there will be prescription lenses that already has surpassed the Kickstarter goal. So if you want magnetic prescription lenses, you can get them and they pretty much attach to the headset itself. There are magnetic points. They can attach the prescription lenses on top of the original lenses and you would have a much better experience that way. Those will be sold separately. Now let's talk about weight. The numbers here are not perfect, obviously. It's a prototype and the cables are hanging down from the headset themselves. But overall, even though it looks larger than the HTC Vive, it was actually much, much lighter than the HTC Vive. Now, that said, my HTC Vive has the deluxe audio strap, but even then, the HTC Vive is just really heavy. I mean, even without the strap, it's extremely heavy. So the Pimax AK was actually going around 400 grams, and the Vive was going around 800 something grams. Another question people asked on Reddit was, is the cable replaceable, and can you buy an extra cable? And how long the cable would be in the final version? So. Yes, there will be a detachable cable and you can buy them separately and the cables will be five meters long on the final version. As for the breakout box, those will be sold separately on their store. So you can imagine it's going to have a separate store, uh, just like the Vive, where you can buy replacement parts and accessories and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. Um, you're not just buying the headset and being left with whatever you have and no way to fix or upgrade. So this headset, once again, is modular and it does have attachments that you could attach to this thing, such as the leap motion kind of thing that I did not get a chance to try out because it seemed like they didn't have it on hand. Now let's go ahead and talk about nose room. And it's something that usually I have encountered multiple times with at least Google Cardboard headsets. I've reviewed like 40 of them and most of them have issues with nose room. The prototype here was actually pretty good. I was able to fit one finger between my nose and the headset itself. The headset is kind of using a cushion design similar to the Oculus, I believe. So the lenses and the nose room are covered by a nice mesh cushion kind of cover thing. So it's flexible and it's not gonna have any hard points. And the last thing here was the tracking. Everything tracks very fine, but one thing I did notice is that the tracking would go off pretty easily. It's really not an issue if you're in game, but if you're holding it and trying to sync the headset or something and you put your hand in front of it, it would disconnect. Unlike with the HTC Vive, if you put your hands in front of it, it would disconnect but reconnect quickly and recover the tracking itself using other sensors. You'd notice there are more sensors on the sides than on the front. So that is something to keep in mind. Hopefully we'll get more trackers or something on the front in the future revisions. Now, let's talk about the display itself. The brightness levels were medium. They were definitely much better than the Pimax 4K, which is something that I did have issues with. Contrast levels were also as expected from an LCD panel. They're not too dark, but they're not too bad as well. I'm fine with it. There was an issue with that. I've watched a couple of videos of previous people trying it out. For example, on Tested, I believe. Uh, they were talking about how the edges of the display were actually stretched. That is not the case. That's already probably been addressed now on the V2 and future headsets. It gives you a full sized renderer on the headset. So both displays are rendering their full capacity. And one thing I did notice, I didn't get a picture of it and probably they don't want me to show you guys maybe. I did take a look at the preview window and the aspect ratios of the actual renders in the preview window, they look like 21 by nine. They looked ultra wide and that is probably how we are getting that really high field of view. But that said, we don't really know how big the 4K displays are. Are they 16 by nine or are they 21 by nine? Either way, they are pretty high resolution 
and the headset is taking full advantage of it and rendering actual pixels. Like on the 4K, it was rendering 1440p on a 4K display, which some people were disappointed about, but it was actually not bad since the 4K display was eliminating the screen door effect. Which brings us to the screen door effect. So how are the pixels and what the pixels look like? Well, I've got a side-by-side -side comparison of the Pimax 8K, 4K, and the HTC Vive. And you can see here the difference and what they look like. On the Pimax 4K, you'd notice there are some kind of ridges that are triangular, and you can really tell the pattern. But the screen door effect here is not completely eliminated, but it is much, much better than the HTC Vive, that is for sure. But this is pretty much a close-up of what the pixels look like if you're interested. So there you go. It's not patterned, so you're not going to notice a pattern but it's also just simple dots. So it's pretty easy to forget about. Now let's go ahead and talk about the field of view and the edges. So the edges on the lens were kind of blurry since I was using glasses and it was really awkward to put on since my glasses were actually pushing me far away from the lens. So I can't give you much information about that. That said, the pair of lenses that I've tried out are already obsolete since they have the version three of the headset with newer lenses there again being showcased at the New York and San Francisco events. Now, the field of view here uh, also was being affected by my glasses, so I can't give you a clear-cut answer, but what I can tell you is that there's a definite improvement when it comes to field of view compared to the HTC Vive. With the HTC Vive, it's pretty much a binoculars. With this one, it's much wider, and that is nice to see. Now, moving on to the top and sides of the display that is inside the headset, uh, first of all, the sides are obviously much wider. The height of the displays, on the other hand, was very similar to the HTC Vive, so you're not getting much field of view when it comes to vertical, but you are definitely getting much more field of view on the sides. And once again, I did not notice any ghosting, which is something I noticed and had issues with on the Pimax 4K, so big plus right there. Uh, the headset also has some kind of cool RGB effects on the front. Right now, it seems like they are just random, but hopefully in the future, we could adjust those and customize them to our liking. That'd be really cool. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the controller of the headset and the base stations and I've been told that the base station looks might change to something else. Right now it looks pretty good, it's pretty beat up, but it works and I don't mind that kind of look. But again, that could change to something else. The controls on the other hand are again going to change to a Knuckles type of controller and we know that from that last update I believe on the, either the Kickstarter or the forums. Basically they have plans to change the controller into the Knuckles controller which is pretty exciting and much better than the HTC Vive want controllers. Also someone mentioned to see what the reality lens looks like compared to it. If you don't know, reality lenses are pretty huge and they do have double layered Fresnel lenses. The Pimax didn't have double layered, maybe they have in the V3, but here's what they look like side by side. The Pimax 8K has 55 millimeter lenses and I've checked that personally. And the last thing to talk about here is the modules they have planned for the 8K headset. So right now I have the brochure on the screen here. You can take a look at it in the description below, high resolution photos if you want. But basically they have a bunch of different modules planned for this headset that you could buy separately and add and upgrade your headset. One of them being a Vive & Chill like cooling fan to keep you cool and keep you from fogging your lens. A magnetic clip-on prescription lens which is really awesome, especially for glasses users. A wireless module which should turn the headset into a wireless headset. A scent module which should give you some kind of smells while you're inside VR. A hand motion module which is basically a leap motion with a higher field of view and it is much better implemented into the headset. And I heard it actually works much better than the original leap motion which is great. And finally an eye tracking module that has not been unlocked yet through the stretch gold. Right now, the current Kickstarter is sitting at just over 2.6 million, which is really impressive since the original goal was actually 200,000. But not only that, it also has surpassed the original Oculus Kickstarter, which is pretty impressive. Anyways, this has been a long video. Hopefully, I've answered most of your questions and most of the Reddit questions and suggestions. Overall, it's a pretty good headset and the V2 is very promising. Remember, this is a V2 prototype and they have multiple prototypes coming up that are going to be much more improved and much more refined. But from what I see right now, it's a really promising headset and Pimax are gonna back it up because I've seen them with the Pimax 4K. They kept pushing updates frequently and improving the headset and staying in touch and taking suggestions from the community. So it is really nice to see that there is another option for room scale VR coming out from a different company other than what we know right now. So yeah, that is actually pretty much it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for content like this and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.